from matroids to mining, mathematician Jeff Whittle has done it all. And we're going to have a chat to him today. G'day. How are you? Hi there, John. Very good. Now, I, I know you're a mathematician now, but you have done some mining in the past. How did those two things, seemingly disparate occupations, happen for you? Yeah, well, I, I grew up in Tasmania, which is the, the, the mining is a traditional sort of thing there. And when I left, when I finished school, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do in life. I, and I actually had no ambitions to be a mathematician at all at that stage. But one way of earning good money was to go into the mines. So I yes. went into the mines and I worked in the mines in Tasmania for, oh, a few months. And then I spent a year traveling around Australia. And that's a long time ago now. But in those days, you could just pick up a job in a mine anywhere and earn what was big money for the time. And it was a great way of traveling around and working in interesting places and meeting some really interesting people, I can tell you that. But did you, but you, so you didn't need to have a great maths back background to get into mining? No, no, to get into mining, you, you, it was pretty tricky. You had to turn up <laughs> at the mine and say, are you looking for people? And they'd say, yep, when, when can you start? <laughs> you say, I you am know? one. Yeah, <laughs> and then they put you at the back of this huge drill or behind this, this, this machine, you know, and sort of like, uh, uh, it was it was an interesting thing to do for a while, yeah. So were you good though? Were you good at maths at school? Or was it something you excelled at and liked? Well, no, not really. I mean, <laughs> actually, I, I, when I was in primary school, I can remember we used to have these mental arithmetic t tests, and, and I used to get about four out of ten for them. So I was I was really really bad at arithmetic. You know. But when I went to high school, I was a bit better. We started doing geometry and things like mm. that. But I never, I was never something I was particularly good at, no, no, and just a little, just a couple of times I could see that there were things I could see going on in geometry that I could see the other kids were finding difficult but I wasn't, that, yeah. you know, and, and that I found that interesting, that, that, that were things that I found interesting at that stage, you know, but I, I never felt that I was any particularly good at maths, you know, I was okay but yeah. nothing flat. So know. what was that little turning point that suddenly, you know, that little moment that... Oh, made me decide that maths was pretty yeah. interesting. Well, actually, it took quite a while because after I spent a year mining on the mainland, I spent a year travelling through Asia and Europe, and then I finally decided to go to university. But I didn't really want to do maths then either. Well, what I really wanted to do was philosophy because I wanted to... Uh, basically, I wanted to discover the secret to life, the universe yes. and everything. But, yes. but I sort of thought, well, I better do a bit of a trade subject as well so I, I, I did maths as well as philosophy at university and, and as time went on um, I kept I, I stayed interested in philosophy but the trouble with philosophy is that everything I had thought about someone else had thought about it before and they were a lot brighter than me and done a much better job of it so I realized there's no good you know philosophy wasn't going to be a good good thing for me and and eventually I sort of gravitated more towards the math side and and, and the further I went on in university it it, it just became more and more interesting as I started to see what the subject was really about. Yeah, you know, and did you think you probably had a better chance of finding the meaning to life through mathematics rather than philosophy? Uh, no. No. Because no. uh, I've been oh. doing mathematics for a long time now and I still haven't got a clue. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was 24 you, you or something. Do you have any ideas? I, I yeah. thought the answer was yeah, 24. Well, no, I thought it was 48. But I, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No, no, cool. maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you became a mathematician um, and now, I mean, what area of branch, branch of maths do you work in? Well, I, I, I washed up in, in for the area I'm in now for complicated reasons, but um, it's, an, it's an area which is discrete maths. And so, right. so basically, like most of the maths that you're exposed to if you go at high school and say six and seven form is really, uh, you start to, to, it's working towards doing this subject called calculus. Yes. And calculus is all about continuous phenomena where the change is smooth, right? You know, so like a car accelerating or planets yep. traveling around the sun and things like that. Yep. But what's happened is that that's not the only type of situations that, that arise, and particularly with computers and the development of computers in the last 50 or 60 years, they're nothing like that. A computer is a discrete machine, right? Mm -hmm. It consists of things that are either on or off, or zeros or ones, yeah. and, and, and so it's, everything is, is discrete. It's either in this state or that state, but nothing in between, you know? So, so, so all of the mathematics, that, that all of the calculus, all of that type of mathematics, it really is nothing to do with computers. So with the existence of computers, that means there's been a demand for, um, and, and a practical demand, but sort of like an intellectual curiosity type Right. That people started to become aware of the possibility of all of all sorts of other mathematical ph phenomena that they hadn't ever bothered to think about before. So, so calculus is indiscreet. 
Yeah. Calculus is indiscreet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. those are the people yeah. you don't like to, to, to Oh no, it won't go there. Associated with. No, 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 no. So no. the discreet no. people, yeah. Yeah, I mean obviously we you know, like we, we talk to each other in passing in the car. <laughs> no, no, it's some of my some of my yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Some of my best friends do calculus. <laughs> you know, but I don't really want to let that be widely known. No, widely, no, no. <laughs> we can scratch that from this. Yeah, thanks. Right. Right. I appreciate that. Right. Right. Okay, so you're in the discrete area mm. which deal, deals with things which are a bit more black and white, is that what you're saying? Yeah, well Well, of? yeah, black and white at some level, at although some level. you know, like mix up a lot of black and white dots and you yeah. get every shade of grey you ever want. <laughs> yes. you know? So it's not it's yeah. not that, that black yeah. and white. Yeah. yeah, but that's that that's sort of um, that is the area that yeah. I'm in. But it's a huge area now. Like I mean it, it's it what was a small area of mathematics. So when I went to university, there were no courses in discrete maths, right? Mm. Now at Victoria University where I am, that there, there are you know, there are first, second and third year and honours courses in discrete maths and all the computer scientists wow. students have to do the first year courses. So, yeah. so the world's, you know, like that, the world's changed a lot since I went to yeah. university, you know. So none, none of the stuff I teach I ever did when I was a student, you know. So, yeah. it's, so, so it's a, well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's all, it has grown a heck of a lot since mm. those days. And is, is, it's a good time to be a mathematician. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's good times for mathematicians at the moment, <laughs> you know, like there's... Uh, I mean, you know, they, uh, well, maybe. Well, main dairy farmers of the academic world, really, isn't it? It's just going on. Yeah, up. well, <laughs> except my uncle was a dairy farmer, and, and I'll tell you what, I think milking cows, it, it literally sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't go there. You wouldn't no, go there, no. Oh, no. It's a lot of money. It's a lot more money than I would earn, I assume. It's but, liquid yeah. gold, but yes, yeah, I hear yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what, what, do you, what do you like about the maths you do most? Well, well what... Well, what really is that, that I just think I'm totally spoiled, right? Because as you start, as I, when, I, when I was exposed to research level mathematics when I was a graduate student, what you're also exposed to is, uh, it's actually the opposite of what people think. People think that most problems in mathematics are solved because when they're, ex the mathematics they're exposed to as students is stuff that's been done. Mm. Answer well, at the back of the book. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, and then, and then, amazingly, there's this whole huge area where not only the answer, answers are not in the back of the book, no one's got a clue <laughs> as to how to even begin to find the answer. And so, what you what you just see is this mass of unsolved problems, you yes. know, and you just sort of, a, and 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 that's what I was exposed to as a graduate student. And I really, I've just spent the rest of my life yes. nibbling away at in in this particular area at trying to bring the unknown into the known and mm. and. So by and large, I'm just sort of paid to just pick and choose all of these interesting unsolved problems and have a go at them, you know. And uh, it's not a bad way to pass the time. It's much better than milking cows. Much better than <laughs> Well, exactly, yeah. it's pioneering stuff. I'm sorry, you know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the actually, I've got to apologise to my Uncle Peter there because yeah. he, was a re he is a really nice bloke, you know. So but but he, I don't like milking cows. You don't like milk. Well, you know, and so, um, I mean, you're an Australian. You're mm. actually from Tasmania, as mm. you say. Um, so you get to travel a bit through your mathematics? Oh, uh, yeah, well, that's... That, actually, I worry about that these days. I've, I travel too much because my carbon credits really <laughs> suck. <laughs> Your carbon no, no, huge. no. My carbon footprint's not good. I genuinely do worry about that. But yes. yeah, but it's, the thing about mathematics is truly international. Right? Mm. That, that um, it's uh, uh, it's just you know every everywhere in the world the people, mathematical problems people are thinking about are essentially similar. So yeah. um, in any given year, I would sort of be I'd be go to the Canada at least once and yep. Europe you know, and, and Asia sort of, because mm. there's, there's conferences there, but not only that, I think it's something that people don't realise about mathematics. These days, all of my work is collaborative, mm. you know, like, you, you, I sort of had this idea, even when I was a graduate student, what you did as a mathematician was sat in a room by yourself and thought about stuff by yourself, because that's what we, you know, when we were at school, we sat at our desk and we did the sums by ourselves, we looked up the answer in the back of the book by ourselves, and you know, that was, and if you were doing anything collaborative, hey, that was essentially cheating, right? You know, but, but actually, it's not like that. All of the work I do is with other mathematicians, and what we do is we get together. Mm. And I just don't, we don't think about these problems on our own. We get together and talk about the problems and, you know, sort of argue and get pissed off with each other and all of that sort of stuff. So mathematicians <laughs> need social skills these days, don't they? Uh, no, no, you don't, because if you've got a bunch of people with no social skills, no one notices. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But actually, there are mathematicians out there with social skills, but uh, yeah, I hope, anyhow, but by our standards, anyhow, yeah, yeah. Well, we're doing all right. You set the bar pretty low. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, look, Jeff and I are going to go and plant some trees to offset his carbon footprint right now, but uh, thanks very much for talking. Okay, thanks, John. It's Cheers. great.